Hey guys, uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, I want to round this off just like I did that. So I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to duplicate, rotate it 36 degrees, and then go into uh, select this edge, hold control to faces, faces, make sure I'm in face mode, and I'm going to grow my selection. That's enough. Delete, and there we go. Now we have just that section. Okay, and let's delete half. Those uh, curves we made earlier are coming in very handy. Okay, so we need to add some loops just like we did uh, with the other. So, what we're gonna do, I wanna be able to see uh, where the vertices are, so I'm gonna go to display, uh, polygons vertices. Now I can see where the vertices are and that, that means I can see from this view where I need to drop my lines. It doesn't have to be exact, we just want to go relative to this. We can also use that as a guide, but I'd rather use the actual geo. That. So we're going to be replacing from here So I'm going to uh, do this same way as we did before. Uh, let's see. Now we can grow our selection to make the selection. So I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to go on diagonal from this face to this one, to that one, to this one. Now if I double click here, now if I grow my selection, I'll get exactly what I want. Now I can extract. Clear history. Make sure keep spacing is on. Snap that. And then I want to scale in this edge's direction. So I'm going to um, move my pivot here. I'm going to uh, hold control, right click, go to axis, and select set orientations component, and then click on this edge. Doesn't look like anything happens, but actually it does change the orientation of the select tool, of the scale tool. And now we can. Do that. I just get it close enough. Okay, I want to see the wireframe. I'm going to hold the uh, C, middle click and drag on this edge. look like we might not have to do the same amount of work that we had to do on the other one so let's just try it like this so first I'm moving the pivot to uh, to the corner here and then I'm holding V and snapping 
So to move the pivot, I'm holding D and V and middle mouse dragging. This will move the pivot and snap it to the closest uh, uh, vertex that I'm mousing over. Then I'm holding only V and middle dragging to move it. And we can actually just scale to make sure this matches up. Moving the pivot. Okay, that's good. So now let's see what we have to get rid of. Okay, those lines look like will be enough. Select that. Combine, merge, soften. Let's do that. Let's see that. I think we might have double faces. Nope. It just didn't merge. Just bridge those. Good. Fill hole, and then I'm just going to redraw. Actually, there's a faster way to do this. Bridge that and then one to three, so we need divisions of three. Uh, this happens just loses a, sh a shader assignment, just right click and assign Lambert one. Bridge that. Let's redraw this line. Alright, so we need to add uh, a loop here for uh, our bevel to continue. Okay. Set this to relative, but it doesn't have to be so tight there. And see, now we can clean the 
this up a little. All right, so this can go here. That can go. Mm, no, we don't need that there. Let's see. We'll add a bevel. that and then I'll loop here for this one and then we'll just count one two three four five good and let's see if we can figure out how to uh, continue this so let's do that all right and then I want to duplicate and rotate this See if we can get a match. Let's try 36. Let's try half that, which is 18. Aha. Uh -huh. So now we can combine, merge that. And let's fill this in. Make sure you save often. Um, Maya does love to crash. I'm going to add a loop. that we'll add up here on there okay now we just need to finish this now we have a couple options we can continue the lines all the way around or we don't um, there's no reason to have that many edge loops so we can push them up into here and this is relatively flat and we can finish it there so we'll need because we have an odd number of loops here we'll have to add at least one then we'll need two going up here so if I delete this edge like this I can then uh, insert two loops up to there and the process we're going to use will just loop them back into each other hold shift and shift shift and then we'll delete these two, control delete and connect that. And it's out of the way, you don't see it, but you have nice clean loops going down. So that means we can select this and move it down there. So now we need to finish off this uh, this back section. So 
72, and then shift D, shift D, shift D. All right, so that looks actually really good. So I want to close the close this off. I want to make this geometry as uh, as watertight as I can. So um, let's get started. Um, one thing we can do is we can extrude this like that and then I'm gonna fill hole I'm gonna then take this scale this up and then extract oops let's go to object and the reason I want to do that is because I don't want to work on more than I have to so I'm gonna hide this I'm gonna select this right here select these edge loops or I mean sorry these faces all right and I don't need that bring this back down so and these are now the holes that we're going to use for our booleans and to clean this up so it's much easier to work on small sections there's no reason to work on so much geometry okay so first thing Gonna extrude these guys out like that and invert. That's gonna be the Boolean. Now let's pick a small section to work on. Let's bring these curves back. Okay, so that means we can go from. Uh, here there and then we'll go from here to here that should give us a little pie slice we can delete the rest and if we're not sure we can always snap the grid like that okay so that's much less to worry about let's inverse it while we're working on it and let's think about how we're going to clean this up hmm. well actually the easiest way would be to this turn keep spacing off like that and then we'll add some loops now we can add loops uh, equal distance turn component off and just like that this off on the edges that we have 15 okay so that would work all right so to um, actually I want to do it this way negative 72 these loops here and it's going to be a little uh, time consuming but I think I can figure this out I'm going to set this to multiple let's do 10 
turn off autocomplete add loops and what we're looking for is how many loops we have here one two okay we have 15 so let's see if we can add 15 here like that and I'm going to go from here to here. So I'm not really sure if this is going to work, so I'm just trying it. And what we want to do as we make these uh, lines, so when we get to the end, we have a quad, a single quad. If it doesn't work, then we have to adjust. It seems like it's time consuming, but the geometry looks pretty good and it's, it's a pretty mindless way to figure this out, so at least I think so. So that means I don't have to think too much. Okay, so we almost had it. We just need to go one up because see, right now we're missing one. So if we go, we start from here. To there Alright, perfect. See, we have a, a quad there. So if I select these loops here, these edges, and then select contiguous, and then just deselect, and then control delete, contiguous on that, and delete. Okay, so now it's all quads, and we can do our boolean. Okay, mesh boolean. Whoops. Let's see. Uh -huh. Make sure to get rid of these guys. So that's good. Now I'm going to double click this loop and this loop and control delete. Uh, what happened to my. Let's save. All right, so. Sometimes changing the order will give you a different result, and I don't know where my why this is was reset. It should be on edge, not normal. All right, so that's what we want. What in the hell is going on? Okay, something's going on here. Um, let's 
let's just save just to make sure it doesn't crash. All right, so let's merge to see if anything if we can get those to connect. All right, so you, as long as you have two edges connecting to a hole uh, like this, we can delete the rest so we can redraw them. Now since this is going to be a flat area, um, we don't have to be uh, really particular with our edge flow. Actually, get rid of this and just count one. Let's see, we have some vertices kind of floating there. I don't know why. Alright, so we had some bad geometry there for some reason. Oh, it's a lot of bad geometry. Okay, so for some reason they got messed up. All right, it should be good now. Six, So I'm going to extract. Clear history, duplicate. Negative one, and then rotate it negative 72. Now we can combine and merge. that and that's what it looks like and then let's unhide that piece we'll need to reverse this Oh, 
Okay, so this is what it looks like. Uh, almost ready to be mounted. Um, we'll need the opposite on the other side, so let's do that. And all we need is bring back all these curves. Okay, so this is let's hide this for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that and then grow my selection. Right. Oh, almost. done. Alright, so now we just need to extrude this down. Create the loop for the tire. That should be good. looking really good let's uh, let's hide these curves let's make the center cap uh, I did separate the geo let's get let's clean this up a little bit we have all of these extra geometry floating around there's the cap uh, let's see get rid of these guys that and that okay so there's our cap Let's look at our image again. <laughs> All right, so we'll add a loop here. And let's see, can we? How many images that we have? 20. Probably should redo this with something that's divisible by 3. So let's do 24. Get rid of that. That's going to be better. I just want to rotate this like that just so I can see where the Mercedes logo is going to go. So let's add a loop. Okay. That's going to be like that. Okay, so now we can rotate this back. 
and we can hide that. All right, so we'll work on you know, on a small section, and it's a little the cap is a, a little rounded, but I don't want to worry about that now. I'm going to make it completely flat. It's going to be way better. Let's get rid of this. Oops. That and get rid of these edges. I'm gonna add some loops. Like that. And then if we look from here, this is gonna be raised like this. Now let's add line like that. From here, we'll go to here. So now we can get rid of this and, and that. Okay, so that's all quads now. This is a triangle, but I'm not worried about it because it's in a flat area, and if it, if you subdivide, it'll get, go away. And then this, we'll just need to put this somewhere. Okay, so that looks really good. Duplicate, flip to this side. Oops, let's freeze it because we want to make sure we can do a negative one. Uh, duplicate and then rotate 120. And shift D. Combine. Check to see everything's good. That looks perfect. All right, now. Uh, I'm going to subdivide this once. Uh, first, let me extrude this. There. And um, I need to subdivide it because I need more geometry when I round this off. So I'm just going to do once like that. That should be good. Now, we can add a nonlinear wave. So what the wave does is it will let us do that, but all you have to do is increase the wavelength to very large. Look at it. So you can see normally the wavelength is small, so you get you know a wave like that. But if you increase the wavelength you can create a circular uh, deform Clear history. It's on hide. Oops, shift, uh, shift control H will unhide the last thing you hid. I'm going to line that up. And we'll probably have to scale it to fit. A little overlap. 
check one more time. That's good. There it is. So we have the rim and uh, the Mercedes logo now. Um, you know what? Let's make the uh, the lug nuts real quick. Uh, this is going to be very simple. So I'm going to just do that. What we'll do is we'll use a um, cylinder with a subdivision of 12 because uh, a lug nut has six sides but we need something a little more than that because we're gonna make one that looks like this it's kind of extruded so you can either use uh, this uh, manipulator uh, doohickey to scale this way but you can also hold control and just left click on uh, let's say Y and you will scale in Z and X together let's hide that hide that You rotate this uh, 60. You can then snap these and negative 60. Now you get that shape. Okay, so. So now we'll add a loop there, a loop here, and a loop there. And then I'm going to select faces here, just extrude them in, add a loop there, like that. And then what we need to do is we need to add a bevel here. So I'm going to use the tool, uh, the multi-cut tool. 75 there, 75 there. I'm going to go out to there. Or 25 on this side, 25, and then out there. All right, that looks great. And then we'll do the same on this side. Now if we get rid of this, you can see it creates a quad there and everything is nice and clean. But before I do that, I'm going to isolate this section, get rid of this, freeze it, duplicate 60 degrees and shift D there now we can get rid of these extra edge loops okay that looks pretty good and if you want we can also just extrude this like that. Don't like this star here, so I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to go to mesh average and then I'm going to select this uh, create the formers nonlinear 
wave. And just round that off. Okay, so that looks really good. See, it's nice and clean, all polygons. I'm going to have freeze transformations, sh Control Shift H, which will unhide that. Bring this back. Let's scale this down and fit it down here. Okay, so snap that. See what looks good. That's pretty good. Okay, so now what we can do is just uh, modify, freeze, reset, duplicate, and 72 degrees, and shift D, shift D, shift D. And we can just combine these, there's no reason they need to be separated. Okay, um, that's it. Um, let's see what it looks like if we assign something shiny. That's what it looks like. We haven't even subdivided it, but you can see it looks pretty good. Um, in the next video, we will make a tire uh, to go along with this wheel. It should be pretty cool. Uh, so stay tuned and subscribe and like. Thanks.